Hickok 45 and look what I have the new Century Arms C39 V2 yes been uh, wanting to get my hands on one here for some time finally did and uh, gonna shoot it well actually have been shooting it some and I kind of like it so far we'll see how it does today good looking gun isn't it I mean it's really a good looking gun with the Magpul furniture and everything and uh, seems to be well put together maybe we will see if we can break it now we're not gonna do a torture test or anything but we're gonna shoot it some more and so far we've not had any trouble I think I'll start out with a little pot smoking <laughs> yeah just to get the day started right how's that and a little Listerine killing Boom. Oh, now that's pot really smoked. Hot dog. <laughs> There's another 12 ouncer. Boom. <laughs> Put your cap off. Let's go across the hill for a couple. Oh, and a cloud of dust. Look at that. Let's try that little one over there. I can't believe I can hit anything. I'm having this deal with the uh, classic AK sights here. I'll take it. I'll take every hit. I knew that was all. I knew that was all. <laughs> I knew that was a hit after I heard the ring. Uh, one more over there. And you know what? Let's put a couple on these guys. <laughs> Click. Okay. She's probably empty. You think? Yep. Let's look at it here a second. Okay. Yeah, we did the first one uh, a while back, as you might recall, and uh, shot it, played with it. John broke it. We'll talk about that. We take this one apart. And, and the V2, they fixed some things. They've upgraded it here and there, and uh, it uh, it seems like a nice gun. Okay, uh, I think they run around seven, seven fifty, something like that. Uh, it's kind of a. I don't know if that's a low end AK. I guess that for an AK, that's kind of maybe a, more in the middle. But it is a nice one. It's milled. That's the thing. You know, this is milled out of a whatever they, they say, 11 pound uh, chunk of steel. You know, so it's a has a milled receiver, and that always adds to the cost. So for a milled receiver uh, AK, that's not bad. But yet it's an AKM in, in that it takes, I think, all the AKM furniture. And the reason I think they did that, as I understand, is because there's so many more you know stamped uh, AKMs out there, and so it'll take uh, all that that furniture that's available okay all this is magpul on, on this one and it actually looks pretty good uh honestly there are some magpul stocks and different things that i don't like or tapco stocks and polymer stocks from any, from any company caai whoever it is uh, different companies and sometimes you can put that stuff on a firearm even a black firearm like this and it, it just looks horrible to me really uh and i have nothing against polymer you know that right but i, I kind of like the looks of that i have to say uh, cool. uh let me go ahead and take it apart before it gets too hot i mean you know what i didn't bring my hammer out here i was going to do that but that's okay it has a slightly thicker uh dust cover as i understand than most and here's the piece john broke on his you might remember in that video I don't know if they've improved that, if it's still cast or, or not. And we still aren't sure whether that was John's fault or the gun's fault. But you'd think an AK could take a beating, right? They're supposed to be able to take a beating. Uh, and keep on ticking. Okay? So there's your bolt and everything. It's like an AK, doesn't it? Yeah. And uh, it, it, the machine work and everything on it, I'm not a machinist. I'm not an expert. But it looks really smooth. It, it, this looks really well done. I have to say, and uh, I took this off. Uh, and I, it, you know, when you get a new AK or a newer AK, generally speaking, this lever is like impossible to just pull up with your hands. 
I had a little brass hammer and punch I was going to bring out and take off. But I did it uh, just a little bit ago, actually. Uh, forgot to bring it out. And what I liked about it was the, the gas tube up here. I, I, pull, I got this up. You got to get it started with a brass something, hit it. And uh, when you get it up to here, it's fine. And then this just pulled right out. Uh, every AK I've had, you still had to hold your mouth right and jiggle it around and jiggle this around, even after you have it loose, and get the gas tube out. And uh, but it just comes right out and right back in. Okay, so you just have to take my word for it, since I'm too stupid to remember to bring my hammer and, and chisel and <laughs> and punch out here. But it it does seem to be well made, as I understand it, is black uh, nitride coated inside and out and. The more I read about that stuff, uh, the better that seems to be. You know, a lot of people swear by that over uh, hard chroming, even the inside of a barrel, and it doesn't affect the uh, the metallurgy. It doesn't affect uh, anything. It just it just treats the metal and supposedly treats it really, really well. So, and it's not cheap. So apparently, uh, they've gone to some added expense for that. Uh, they've modified the. As I understand, uh, well, I guess it's the trunnion back here, whatever, the back of this, to where it'll take a uh, like an M4 stock. There's an adapter you can put on there, and it's easier to adapt it to, to an M4 stock or more stocks and more different kinds of furniture if you want to. You got a little, uh, this is sort of an ambi uh, mag release there. You got the little T-shape there. Uh, what else about it? You got your standard old uh, hard to see AK sights. That's the thing about an AK. Look at that. I've got sight radius uh, that long on some of my handguns, <laughs> so you don't have a lot of sight radius. What I do, first thing I do for an AK, I'm going to keep is put a peep sight on it here. And uh, there's some companies that make some really cool ones, like Krebs Custom is on both of my arsenals. I think Williams might make one, but I highly recommend that. It's just so much easier to get a sight picture with it. And uh, you've got a you know standard uh, muzzle brake up here again that's something i believe they changed to the point where it's easier to replace that if you don't like that muzzle brake it'll uh, be easier for you to find different uh, standard threading you can uh, reverse threading you can find muzzle brakes for it or it supposedly takes a suppressor uh much more easily than the earlier model okay it's it's, it's all configured so that you can put a suppressor on it if you want to i don't know how many people are doing that with ak's uh Okay, sights. I put a little white paint on the sights. So you can see that. And if I think of anything else to tell you that's not true, I'll uh, let you know. See if we can get this back in here. I didn't really lube it much. Uh, I had some fair amount of lube on it when we got it. So, been shooting it, and uh, I have not moved the sights at all. It seems to be pretty much on. You know, I'm not going to do any 500 yard shooting or anything. Now, one thing about the dust cover, I'll tell you, uh, both John and I struggled until me, being a genius, figured it out. If you push that in like you normally do with a dust cover up that way and try to get it down, I, you just can't do it. Uh, you would break something if you forced it. I discovered with it, after a little frustration, you got to pull it back just a little bit because it, it catches on a lip. And then it's actually easier to put in, but you got to keep it in the groove up front. Okay, but it can't be fully forward. You got to pull it out just a little. And struggle with it. There we go. It's not too hard once you get the hang of it. But... I think the hole in the rear of the dust cover needs to be a little larger or something. There's something that's not a 100% fit, all right? So, because usually you can just pop them in there and you just pop them in and it's not a problem, okay? Especially if you're an AK expert. So, it's all American made and uh, and it feels good. The, the pistol grip, of course, that's bragging on Magpul, I guess, but the pistol grip feels good to me. The trigger is good. I understand it's not a Tapco trigger or anything. It is a Century Arms. I think they're making the trigger. And it's a nice trigger, kind of a two-stage. You pull uh, uh, back a ways there, and, and it's really clear when it's going to break. And it's got a nice break. I, I don't know. I'd say five pounds, maybe four pounds. Uh, not dangerously light or anything, just just right. So I sound like I'm trying to sell you this rifle. I do like an AK, and uh, uh, you know the the really you know, the only negative I have discovered so far to me is the difficulty in getting dust cover on and off, and it's not malfunctioned. It feels good and it looks pretty good. Uh, so it seems like a decent decent gun, decent option if you're looking for an AK, and if you don't have an AK. Why are you not looking for one? Okay. All right, American Eagle. Appreciate the sponsorship of Federal. 
and uh, all the American Eagle they send. What should we shoot? How about a couple more on that target? I noticed the American Eagle goes through the paper easier. Ah, you believe that? You're pretty gullible if you do. Oh, I forgot I already shot that. That's why it's not moving. There's no more water left in it. He dog is. <laughs> uh, once the water's out, oh, there's a two liter right there. Bam. The paint can. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, let's go back over there. Oh, cinder blocks. Look at them, man. They need to be shot. Love cinder blocks, dry, dusty, wonderful. Good shooter. Oh, there's not enough ventilation in the burn barrel. Oops, sorry, just had two rounds left. Uh, pretty cool. One thing I didn't point out is they put a uh, they put one of those safeties on. If you can get from other sources, uh, well, Krebs Custom, in fact, I have one. I, I tipped, I, I had it on one of my uh, AKs, then I took it off. I don't know. It just didn't seem like it ought to be on there. You know, it just isn't right. <laughs> Having a safety uh, or a bolt hold back on your safety. But it could be handy. You see how that works? Just literally grabs the bolt arm there and holds it back. Uh, it, it's kind of awkward to, to get on, though. So, you know, it's not something you'd probably use that often. But it doesn't hurt anything, I guess. Okay, so you have that. And it feels good. It feels like all the parts are made the way they ought to be made. Uh, it feels fairly smooth for an AK. Yeah, very smooth, right out of the box. And uh, you know, again, that milled receiver uh, is something that can can cost some money. And I guess if it weren't for that, you know, this would be. Uh, what $150 less probably so it would really be a low end uh, a great bargain but if you want a milled receiver you got to pay for it so you're still talking seven seven fifties I understand uh, standard AK sites front and rear you know your your AK site tool will adjust that for you I've not adjusted anything on the sites uh, just uh, just shot it and gone on and uh, you got your uh, your sling attachment places and there is no uh, Oh, here's a deal killer for you. I forgot one of the biggest negatives. There's no uh, bayonet lug, so somehow you'd need to kind of get around that. Uh, you could maybe duct tape a kitchen knife or your favorite bayonet or something onto it, but there's no bayonet lug and no cleaning cleaning rod and everything. So that's usually not a big deal for most people. Uh, anything else? Any other major negatives I can think of? The sights seem lined up seem vertical and uh, it's a pretty good looking gun I'll have to say I'm a bit of an AK snob yeah I think you know that I it fully admit it I have the arsenals uh, partly because the world of AKs has just been kind of complicated to me I I had a hard time once I realized I really like them and I've had AKs five or six I've owned in the last 30 years since I've lived right here and I'm never sure which ones I like, which ones are the best, and and I just took the easy way out, you know, with the Arsenal, because I think everybody knows they're, they're really good AKs, but there's also a lot of other good AKs, and you just have to know more about it and uh, what you're getting into. So it's great to see more of these coming onto the market and uh, more choices, especially American-made, you know, and it seems to take all the mag, we've got all Magpul mags here today, it comes with a couple of Magpuls, does it come with two, one or two, and uh, I've uh, stuck in uh, circle 10s, which I like, and I just stick with the circle 10s mainly because they work in every AK, I think, that I've ever had, whereas some of the metal ones, I've had bad experience with a few of those. You pick them up and you're not sure where it was made and it doesn't really fit, uh, that kind of thing, but some of those are great too. 
but uh, the mag pulls seem to work uh, well just like the circle 10 so I just stick with those why well, cause yourself extra grief right uh, it it's, it's it's a one in ten twist uh, and again it has that uh, that black nitride uh, treatment it's really more of a treatment I guess than a coating and it's supposed to be a really good treatment so that's one of the criticisms I think of the first model of this was the barrel was not really I don't think do it was it I don't think it was uh, nitride you know treated uh, or chrome lined either one uh, there may have been some that were but I know some were not uh, and the one we had I think was not treated so pretty good all-around gun let's shoot a couple more times and uh, make sure we're not leaving anything standing in this target rich environment I think I'll just not shoot the watermelon and uh, get everybody mad at me but I'll shoot that two liter oh oh and I got a pot down there left to smoke <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot him while he's down because there's still a little something left of him. Yeah, maybe you can take off that chip there. All right. Oh, propane tank. <laughs> and a plate. Nice, nice. A little bit of cinder block left over there. It looks like. Oh boy, I have trouble seeing the sights, but uh, that little white dot helps so I can pretty much get it on. You know what? I think it's watermelon time, don't you? All right, here we go. Oh, uh, uh, caught him a little high to blow him up the way I wanted to. I've got to finish with one on that little dot over there. I just feel better. And the burn barrel really does need some ventilation. All right. Let's see if we're empty. We're empty. Uh, if someone knows how to do it, maybe you'll write me and uh, give me some advice on how to make an AK malfunction because I'm not very adept at it. They just, the uh, crazy things just tend to work. Uh, really, really, they're fun guns to shoot. The, uh, the recoil impulse, uh, I guess it's because of the, that's, that's what it is. I was, I've been noticing since I shot it, and I was thinking it was the trigger, because it has a nice trigger in it. Uh, it it's a pleasant shooter. Uh, it, I don't know, it's like it doesn't have quite enough recoil, the, as much as it ought to, for 762 by 39. Not that that's a punishing round or anything. And I, I realize now it's, the, it's because it has the milled receiver. If you've never had uh, now uh, people will argue that a stamp receiver is actually just as good and some will argue it's better okay so I'm not advocating for one or the other they're both good uh, but with the milled receiver you get a little more weight it's a little stiffer gun I guess and it uh, it, it really is a pleasant to shoot you just want to keep pulling the trigger uh, because that round is just fun to shoot it's not a hard kicking round and you've got a, a fairly heavy gun uh, and a good trigger. I mean, you could just shoot the thing all day. You want to just empty magazine after magazine with it. Uh, it's it's a it's a fine rifle. The uh, the AK in general is, and and this one seems to be a good one. Uh, the truth, the verdict will be out there on the internet though, uh, as people you know buy more and more of them and shoot them a lot. And if troubles surface, you know problems surface, it's easy to find out about. I in my research, I didn't. I didn't see much negative. It seemed like people were liking them so far, and uh, and I, I didn't uncover any big problems with this one. You know, like I said, we broke uh, that little lug there on the one we had earlier. Again, whether that was us, whether that was John being too muscular with it, or whatever, we're not sure. But uh, but anyway, I don't know if it changed that piece at all or or not. But it's a Seems like a fine AK, best I can tell. If you can uh, uh, share 
different information or anything contradicts that, you know, let us know. But it, it seems seems fine, and we appreciate Bud's Gun Shop uh, sending it to us. And uh, you'll see it on eGunner at some point, uh, and with 10% of that going to, to charity and the rest of Bud's. And so we're happy to send that back. Actually, I'm not too happy. I wouldn't mind having one of these, I think. Life is good. We'd like to thank one of our sponsors, SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI has fully accredited distance learning programs where you can get certified in gunsmithing or even an associate's degree in firearms technology. Of course, the study includes hands-on experience, which is important, of course. So check it out. Uh, go to sdi.edu or just click on the link in the description. Okay? And also, we'd like to remind you to check out the Hickok 45 Facebook page and the Hickok 45 and Sun channel and its Facebook page, as well as Gun Culture Radio on iTunes. Now remember all this, because I'm coming to your house randomly over the next year or two to give you a quiz on it, okay? Thank you.